Hey guys, this is my startup tutorial for the A10, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is close the canopy. So you just come over to this switch here and you hold it to the close position. Then when it's all the way closed, you can let go. And while we're talking about the canopy, there's this yellow lever here. If you want, you can pull this to the back. So when you do that, the canopy switch will be deactivated so you don't accidentally open it while you're in the air. All right, let's go ahead and arm the ejection seat now. You can do this by just clicking it like here. All right, the next thing we gotta do is turn the battery on. So you go to this right panel here and you just click this to turn on the battery. And then there's also this switch here that says inverter. You need to right click it up so it says standby. So the next thing we're gonna do is turn on the APU. Now the APU is basically a small engine in the back of the plane that makes compressed air, and we're gonna use the compressed air to start our main engines. So let's go ahead and start the APU now. You come over to this left side here next to your throttle, and you see the APU start, and you just flip it up like this. So and on our engine gauges here, you can see this one on the bottom is the APU RPM gauge, so you gotta wait for this to get to 100%. So now it's at 100%, when that happens, you can go back to the electrical panel and turn on the APU generator. Okay, let's go ahead and start the engines now. We're going to start the left engine first, and the way you do that is by hitting the engine start left keybind, and here is the keybind here. So when you click the engine start left keybind, the left throttle will move forward a little bit, and when it moves forward, if you come over here to your warning panel, you should see this thing that says engine start cycle. That means your engine is starting. And whenever this light goes out, that means your engine is done starting. So if you look at our engine gauges, you can see the core RPM for the engine is moving up. And if you look to our left, you can see the left engine is spinning. So once the left engine is started up, you can go ahead and turn off the APU generator because we don't need it anymore since now the engine is making electricity for us. Okay, now let's go ahead and start the right engine. You do the same thing with the engine start right keybind. There's the start light. Looks like the engine's spinning. Okay, looks like the light's out. So since both of our engines are started, we don't need the APU anymore, so we can turn it off. So just come over here and flip this switch off. Okay, so since both of our engines are started now, let's go ahead and start up all our systems. So the first systems we wanna start is the CDU and the EGI. Now the CDU is this computer right here, and the EGI is our navigation system. So we can power both of those on by flipping up these two switches here. So as you can see, the CDU is starting up now. Now while this CDU is starting up, I need to tell you something about the navigation system. Whenever the computer turns on, by default, the navigation system will start in alignment, and by default, it does a normal alignment, which takes a long time. Now, we don't want to do that. We want to do a fast alignment. So it's really important that once this turns on, you do the fast alignment, which is what I'm about to show you, because if you don't do that, and if you take too long, then you'll be too late, and you won't be able to do it anymore, and you're going to have to wait through the whole alignment. So you can see it's up now. So to do the fast alignment, you're going to click INS, then you're going to click alternate alignment, and then you're going to click fast. And if you see that star come up, that means you did it right. So now we're going to be doing a fast alignment, and it won't take very long to align. So while we're waiting for that to align, let's go ahead and start our other systems. The first thing we want to do is flip up these three switches down here. The first is the Kiku switch. When you turn it on, that will turn on our two screens. Now it doesn't look like they're on now because we need to flip up the brightness switches. As you can see, our screens are starting up. Next thing is the JTRS. This turns on your data link. And then the IFFCC. This will turn, up your he this will turn on your heads up display. Now when you click it once, it's gonna go to the test mode and it's gonna ask you if you wanna do a pre-flight test. Now you can do that if you want, but you don't have to. If you don't wanna do that, you can just flip it up again and just go right into on mode and there's our heads up display. So now that we got those powered on, let's go back to our computer. Now you can see the CDU alignment is done. And the way you know that is because this is blinking at the top here, INS nav ready. Whenever that's blinking, all you gotta do is click this button that says nav. And then our, our INS or our navigation system is in navigate mode, so we are done. 
so now that our net eggy is in nav mode what you got to do is you got to come over here and click this button below your compass that says eggy now by default it was in hars which is a which is a backup system but since our thing is done aligning we want to have it in eggy okay since our screens are all the way on now what we're going to do is we're going to click this button that says load all what this is going to do is it's going to load all our information about our airplane into the systems so for example it's going to it's going to load what weapons we have on and all that kind of stuff and the way that you'll know that this is done loading is there will be a lot of circles that will come up next to these words okay you can see these circles all appeared so that means everything is loaded and now we're done with the screens so we're almost done with the startup there's just a couple more things we can do first we can come to our G meter and we can hold this button to reset it to zero next thing we can do is there is an artificial horizon here right now there's a red flag that means off that means it's in cage mode we want to go ahead and uncage that by right clicking and then moving it up and down until these white bars are aligned with the horizon and then let go then you want to come over here and flip this switch up for the anti-skid then you're going to come over here to these switches near the throttle that say yaw sass and pitch sass these are basically stabilizing systems for the airplane so we're going to flip all these up to turn them on then you're going to come behind the throttle and there's going to be this switch that says EAC. Now EAC means enhanced attitude control and this basically controls the autopilot and stuff. So go ahead flip that on. Next thing is you're going to come back here to the right and there's going to be this switch and you're going to flip it on. This controls our helmet mounted sight. Now if you're not in the A10C2, if you're in the original A10C, um, there's no helmet mounted sight so you're not going to have that switch. Next thing we're going to do is turn on our countermeasures system. You're going to come over here and put it to standby and flip up all these power switches. Now I made a separate tutorial for countermeasures so you can go watch that if you want. The last thing we're going to do for our startup is put our heads up display into navigation mode. By default it's in guns mode, I'm not sure why. But to put it in navigation mode, you're going to click this button on the side of your stick called the master mode control button. You're just going to click it and you're going to keep clicking it till it says nav on your HUD and now you're in navigate mode. That is the full startup for the A10. A few more things you might want to do on the ground. You might want to turn up this switch here that will power on your targeting pod so you don't have to wait to power it on later. You also might want to come here to this button that says MAV and click this EO button and turn it on to warm up your Maverick missiles if you have any loaded. And also just a cool little thing there's this little recording device and you can turn it on and that green light will come on. Obviously it doesn't do anything in DCS but it's just cool that they put that there. And I almost forgot if it's really cold outside then you want to come flip up this switch here that says pedo heat. This heats up the pedo tube which is that thing right there. That is the air sensor that is able to see how fast you're going. If it's really cold outside that might freeze so you can flip this switch up to heat it. Alright, so now I'm going to be going over what you should do if your engine fails to start. Now, there are a lot of reasons for why your engine may fail to start, but there are two main common ones. The first common reason um, is forgetting to turn on this switch right here, the inverter. Now, if you forget to turn that on, the electrical igniters in the engine won't get any power, so you'll just end up flooding the engine with gas. The other common reason for a failed engine start is if you try to start the right engine first without the APU generator on. Now, if the APU generator is on, then it doesn't matter which engine you start first, but if it's off, then you have to start the left one first, and trying to start the right engine first with the APU generator off will not work. And the reason for that is more in depth than this video needs to go to, but basically those are the two main reasons an engine may fail to start. To restart a failed engine, um, the first thing you can try is turning your engine off. So let's, let's say my right engine failed to start. The first thing you can try is turning off your right engine and then fixing whatever you need to do. Like maybe I forgot to do the APU generator. Fix that and then try to restart the engine and see if it works. Now if that doesn't work, that means that the engine is probably flooded with fuel. And if that happens, that means we need to uh, windmill the engine to get the fuel out. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. You start like you normally do. You turn on the battery, the inverter, and the APU. Wait for the APU to get 100% and then turn the APU generator on. So now what you're going to do is you need to find the engine that is flooded with fuel. 
So let's say my left engine is flooded with fuel. What you're going to do is you're going to come here and you're going to put the throttle into the off detent like that. And you're going to see this switch here and you're going to put it in the motor position. And when you do that, you're going to see it's, the RPM is going to start going up. Now what it's doing is it's blowing air through the engine to spin it to get the fuel out. So what you're going to do is you're going to leave it in this motor position for about 30 seconds. After about 30 seconds have passed, you're going to take that engine and put the throttle back into the idle detent like this. And then you're going to put this to the normal position. And you can see it is starting now.